Okay, so question three is all about the, the, the examinable question. It's a question that they can test, but the examiner can test your knowledge on that. So let's look at question three. Uh, that was Adam financial position. I mean, rather, I mean financial position as at August, as at August, I mean financial as at August, first, August 2014 was as follows. So now we are giving, they give us the amend financial position as at 1st of August 2014, and they give us that the cash in hand is 6,300, the cash advance is 24,000, while the stock is 3,600. Now, other than this, we now have, we are required to prepare to open, can you see what we are required to do? We are required to open and make books by means of journal, enter the following transaction and extract a try balance. So we expect to, uh, to put everything now into the journal and then we extract a, a try balance from it. And remember, like I brought up, it's a divine journal in the previous class. At the same time also, we have been able to talk about the accounting process, which talk about the uh, accounting process that talk about the collection of financial statement, of financial information, then going down to the journals, then from journals, we have your ledger, from your ledger, we have your trial balance, from your trial balance, we have adjusted trial balance, from adjusted trial balance, we have your, you prepare your financial statement, okay? So, so based on it right now, we have, you have done one or two things on journals, then let's look at the question that the exam, examiner can test. So these are the odd transactions that happened for that month. These are the transactions, can you see the odds from August to down to August 31st. So these are action that happen. These are transactions that happen in the month of August. In the month of August. Now, after that, this says, so we pick each one after the other, then we what? Then we post them on that journal. Okay, we post them on that journal. Now, in a case where we have, so, okay, we paste the from that journal from then we now post it on that ledger. Okay, we post on that journal. The one that is expected to be posted on that journal, then we post one other one to work to the ledger. Okay? Now, now let's start with the first one. It says that the uh, Hamed cash in hand is three thousand three hundred, cash at bank is twenty four thousand, stock is three thousand six hundred. Now, this addition of this theory shows us a particular item. The addition of this theory shows us that the open the closing balance for the previous month, which is July, will be the opening balance for this uh, for August first. And if you look at transaction given to us, that is an asset. This one that we have here is what we call the current asset. That's current asset. Now, if we have the current assets to be this figure, then the question now is, okay, what will be, what will be our equity? Because we know when we talk about financial position, we say financial position or the accounting equation that we talk about, that accounting equation is a lot about asset equals equity plus liability. When you talk about, okay, what is financial, for financial position is like balance sheet. The asset is on one side, while the liability and equity is on the other side. So if we have the asset to be on the, on the, uh, let's say on the right-hand side, then what will be on the right-hand right side? It means the equity. The equity there that we're talking about is capital. It means that the owners, the, uh, the shares of the owner in the business, the net residual interest on the, the net residual interest on the, uh, Net assets, yeah, the residual interest on the next asset. So that's what equity is also about. That's capital. So that's what we are trying to look at. So addition of this theory, addition of this theory will serve as opening capital for August 2014. It will serve as opening capital for August 2014. Now, how that be said, so let's move on to the next two. So if you look at, let me show you the ledger that you're going to prepare. Can you see John, uh, general, uh, John, sorry. General journal that we can have it here. So we have this three information given to us, which are all current assets. Cash in hand, cash at the bank, and stock are all current assets. So they are on the debit side. Then we now move to the credit side. The credit side is to go there. So the other credit side will be the capital. Can you see? Capital. So we have raised journal to balance the two up together because the left hand side has to be the same with the right hand side when it comes to uh, financial position. Okay. So, and what is the purpose? The purpose is a balance, being opening balance as that 1st August 2014. 
That is the reason why we have this or did that we have raised this journal. The general journal is what is thin open balance as at 1st of August 2014. So you need to know that first. Then so, so let us align this to be uh let's align this that we have created that. Okay, so we have alerted that. Now the next one we want to look at is now that we have alerted that this is capital, then we need to open the uh the ledger we need to open all those ledger now capital account is an equity account capital account is an equity account and when we did the law of double entry we said that equity account always have credit balance it means that normally whenever your equity increases you credit the account and whenever your equity de decrease you debit the account now capital here is an equity item and it means that it's an opening balance. So opening balance will be fine on the credit side, on the credit side. So we post it here. So we have the opening balance 39,900. That is our opening balance. Then after that, we move on to the next one. We need to open cash in hand, cash and bank and what? And inventory record as well. Okay, so that we can, okay, these are our opening balance. Then going forward, we know we open other accounts that we are yet to have, okay? So we look at cash in hand. So we go to cash accounts. Cash is an asset. An asset account have what debit entry. An asset account have debit entry. So we come here, cash account. So we have it to be 6,300. Can you see the balance for August 2014 for that's 6,300. That's 6,300. Then the next one we have is the cash. So we have cash at bank. That is bank account. So we have to open bank account as well because that is the what we are starting with. That is what we are starting with. So we open our bank account. Can you see your bank account here? We have our bank account. So that bank account, we have it to be on the debit side. On the debit side, that's 24,000. 24,000. So that is, that's what we have on that area. That's what we have on that area. So after that also, we now have the inventory. Now the inventory area that we have right now, we don't open, we didn't open inventory account because inventory account here is like a memorandum account, okay? It's a memorandum account because there are two types of way you record inventory. Either you use periodic or perpetual. I think in the next topic that we'll be talking about the adjustment of financial statement, okay? But now, so inventory, our stock will not be open because it does not involve double entry. There's no force we're gonna debit or credit it. But it's going to, we are going to have that record to show the inflow and outflow of stock. Then at the end of the day, we now take stock. It takes stock to know the total item that we have in our warehouse. Are you with me? So that so for this question, we are using what? We are using the periodic method. For this session, we are using the periodic method. Now, after that being said, we now go to the, go back to the question. Now go back to the question and start picking them one after the other. And start picking them one after the other. So the first one that we have is August 5th. August 5th bought goods from coming on credit. Now we bought goods, is that the first transaction? Let's see, let's see. Oh, that's not the first transaction, okay. August 2, why well, 2nd of August, purchase goods in cash. 2nd of August, purchase goods in cash. So what are the goods that they purchase? They purchase goods worth 4,000 Naira. They purchase goods worth 4,000 Naira. So how do we account for this? So the two accounts, we need to identify the two accounts that are involved here before you can go ahead and debit or credit any account. So for this one, we look at, okay, purchases, cash, purchases, cash. Oh, okay, that it means that purchase account is related, is involved, while cash account also is involved in the transaction. So if, uh, if, if the, Purchase account is involved and cash account is involved. The next question is to tell us which account is increasing, which account is decreasing, and what is the impact of this item or the account? Is it increasing both account or reducing both account, or you just increasing one account and decreasing another account? So now purchases goods in cash. Now whenever you purchase goods, it means your total purchase for the period will go up because it's an addition to the purchase, so that your purchase account will go up. Now, looking at cash, when you purchase an item, do you give out cash or receive cash? Definitely, you give out cash. Now, whenever you give out cash, you're not okay, fine. We have known that cash reduces 
why our purchase increases. They will now ask ourselves a question. What element of what? What element in the financial statement actually they belong to in order for us to apply our rule of double entry? So the item that they belong to purchase belongs to an expense account. Cash belongs to what? Belongs to an asset account. So if that's the case, I can easily go, okay, if my purchase account increases, the rule says I should debit expense account whenever it increases. So I'm going to debit purchase account. Now the rule says that whenever my cash account reduces, whenever it depreciates over time, whenever I issue out money, I give out money, then it means that I need to credit my cash account. That's the rule because the cash account falls under assets. And whenever asset is being reduced or given out, they will what? You credit the account, you credit the account. So after I have known that, I'll now go back to my ledger. I'll remember I've opened cash accounts. I've opened cash accounts. So I'll go to my cash account. I'll go to my cash account. I say purchases. The name of the other, the name of the other, uh, the name of the other account is what I'm going to use. So purchases. I have purchases. How much did I purchase? I purchased 4,000 naira worth of goods. Then after that, I will now need to open another account. Remember, this is just one single entry. Then I need to open a second. I want to open another account to do the second leg. Now, the second account that we're going to open here is what we refer to as the purchase account. So I will, I will open my purchase account. Once I open my purchase account, I say, okay, what? Am I debiting or crediting? I will, what? I will debit because I've credited my cash account. So I'll debit with 4000 yeah, it means that I've posted that transaction for the period. It means I've posted that transaction for that day. So I will now move on to the August, 5th of August. 5th of August says that uh, bought goods from Kama on credit. Now, they bought goods from Kama on credit. Now, these two things are involved here. What is involved is that purchases is involved, number one. Number two, there is not, it's not purchased on credit cash. It was purchased on credit. Remember, if I, if I, if I don't know if I've told you before that we have to type of, okay, not yet, it's not yet. Okay, I think I will explain that later. So either you transact a business on credit or on cash. On credit is that you are transacting the business, you are going to the service to the person, the person will pay you in the future. That's what we call what, that's what we call cash transaction, so credit transaction, credit transaction, that you have rendered the service, but the person will pay you in the future. But if you have collected cash, but if you transact a particular, a particular transaction or render a service and you receive your payment immediately, that is what we call cash transaction. So the first one that we have looked at is the cash transaction. Now the second one is the credit transaction. Now we now ask yourself, if you have not paid cash, there is credit. What other account will be involved here? There, there's, an, there's something that we know as trade receivables. Trade receivables are due to credit sales or credit rendered of service over a particular period of time that is due to be paid back to the organization. Now, if you look, if you check out the definition of asset, you will know that trade receivable falls under the element of an asset because it is regarded as what? As a resource that is controlled as a result of, as a control by the company as a result of past events in which what, the economic flow will flow into the economy into the company. So that's trade receivable. Trade receivable is that, okay, this is the resources. You can either control it, giving it or not. You can tell them when to pay it and when not to pay it. You have the control, you can let go. That's number one. Number two is that as a result of past event, the past event we are referring to is you have transacted with them in the past. You have rendered a service to them in the past. So, and that service that you have rendered to them, we bring about an inflow into the economy, into the company, into the company. So it definitely trade receivable is an asset, is an asset. So we have identified based on this transaction on August 5th, we have identified that trade receivables will be affected. The other account that we affected is the purchase account, purchase account. That is the second leg that will be affected. But because, but because these, as, uh, these goods were purchased on credit, we are not going to post everything. We are not going to post that credit item to, we are not going to post the credit item to the uh, purchase account. Where we are going to post it is we are going to post it into purchase day book account. 
purchase day book account. So purchase day book account or any day book account is used to record uh, credit transaction. They are used to record credit transaction. They are used to record the word credit transaction. So you are not going to record that transaction in the purchase day book. It's not in the purchase account. You are going to record it under purchase day book, under the purchase day book. So you come back here and book it. I purchase an item on credit. I purchase an item on credit. So who would I purchase it from? I purchase it from, purchase it from Kama. So Kama is, I purchase it from Kama. Are you with me? Okay, so I have that comma to be what? To my uh, payable, right? So payable, so if I purchase goods on credit, that's payable. It means that I'm owing, sorry. It means that I'm, I'm owing the person, that amount is payable to the what? To that person. That is what payable. It means the amount that I'm owing to that person is payable to the, yeah. So we come here and put comma account, which is payable, and it's a liability because we have received goods that we have not yet enjoyed, that we have, we have not yet paid for. So we have the purchases here. That's we have that to be 17,500. Then the second layer we go to our, for now, we're not going to put those into our purchase account. We're going to open and elect a what? A sales day book. We're going to open a journal and post it under the journal. We call it purchase journal. Or another name given to it is what? Purchase day book. Purchase day book. So we hold the information there. Then at the end of the month, we add everything under the uh, journal together. That's purchase journal and post it into the appropriate account. But for this, for us to have a good traceability and for us to be able to account for the total payables that we owe, the total payable or the total receivables, we need to put them on that journal first so that it will work to increase our traceability and accountability. So after we have done that, we look move on to the next transaction, which is what? Or uh, 7th of August, bought goods, fittings, and paid by check of 2,400. Now, this purchase of fittings and uh, fittings, short fittings and pay by check, it means that two accounts are involved there. What are the accounts involved? Number one account is involved is the short fittings and short fitting is an asset, a non-current asset because it's going to last more than, what, more than one year. And also we have, how did we pay? We make the payment by check. And whenever you make the payment by check, what does that mean? It means that your cash, is one that I was I gave out that money. It means your cash is what I gave out the fund. So you do to you have identified the two accounts involved yet. The first one is the shop fittings, and the second one is your bank. Is your bank. So one is a bank is what decreasing while shop fittings is increasing. So and it's an asset based on the double entry principle. We said that whenever an asset increases, you debit the asset, and whenever another asset what reduces, you credit the asset. Now, short fittings is increasing. So you what you debit short fittings account. Short fittings account. And uh, where is money coming from? It's coming from the bank. So we have the short fittings of 2,400. So we what we credit we debit it. Then the bank is one giving it. So we credit the bank so that we can reduce the amount that is available for us, that is available for us at the bank. Then you move on to the next one. The next one is what we call cash sales. We have on the August level cash sales. Now cash sales mean that they have made sales and they receive cash. It was discussed on credit sales. It was cash sales. So they make sales and they receive cash. Now two accounts are involved there, which is what sales account or revenue account, then what and cash account. These are the two accounts that are involved here. Now, which one is increasing? Which one is decreasing? So you need to know, you need to ask yourself, cash account. Is cash account increasing or decreasing? Yes, cash account is increasing because there's inflow of cash. And whenever we say, whenever cash increases, what do we do? We debit cash account because cash account is an example of an asset element. So, and the other one is sales. What do you do by sales? Sales falls under income. It falls under income in the element of financial statement. And we said, whenever income increases, you credit your income. We credit your income. So we can come back here and pocket. Okay, my cash is one receiving it, is receiving 2,800, is receiving 2,800. And my second leg, we go to my, my sales, my sales. So I'll, I'll change my sales out. Okay. I'm 
I'm trying to say my okay, I've seen it. So I'm trying to say my sick I will say I will not okay what is what credit my sales account. I will not credit my sales account. I credit my sales account. What I've done is that I've I've run the I've passed the message, I've posted it. So I'll move on to the word August 12th. Now, what is August 12th? It's talking about sold goods to Kasumu on credit. Now, sold goods to Kasumu on credit. Now, this is on credit. Now, the first one we did was on cash, but this one is on credit. So we had we need to identify two things here. That sales were actually made, but it was made on credit. And that credit element is recorded under trade receivables. Whenever you make sales and you are yet to receive your money, it's going to stay receivable. Well, but whenever you purchase an item outside and you are yet to pay for it, it's regarded as straight payable. If it's directly involved in the affairs or operation of the business. Then after that being said, we move on to the next one. Now, the next one that we want to look at here is one that talks about the, uh, okay, let's look at that, the posting. Let's look at the posting. Let's look at the posting. So what is the posting? If you look at the posting there, the trade receivables. The trade receivables will be uh was on credit, right? Yeah. So the trade receivables will be debited because it's increasing. The trade receivables will be credited or debited. But the other leg, but the other leg, but the other leg will be found under the uh for now, for now. The other leg, we're going to record it under the sales journal because it's on credit. Then at the end of the month, the total amount on that sales journal will be transferred to the debit credit credit item of sales account. Are you with me? The for now, because it's on credit, the way we treated purchase accounts, purchase or purchase, or purchase on credit, we're going to treat sales also on credit like that, but on a different journal. We open purchase journal for purchase credit purchase while we are opening sales journal for sales or credit sales, for credit sales. Okay, so we move on to the, uh, if you look at that, okay, so we have this here. So we have the Casimu here, can you see on the well? 850, that's the amount that we have here. Then the second leg, we go to the Casimu account under the trade receivables. Under the trade receivables. So let's look at the trade receivables. Let's look at the trade receivables. Can you see now that we have it here? And that is one, two, one thousand, eight fifty. That eight fifty, rather, eight fifty. So sales is eight fifty. So after we have done that, we move on to the next one because of our time, I will probably increase the speed. So our next one, next one we have is what well, is paid karma or by check on credit on account. So we are paying karma by check because we will initially purchased on credit. Now we are paying karma by check. So how much are we paying? We are paying ten thousand. So two accounts are involved, common accounts are involved, and the check account are involved. The check there is the bank account. So bank account is reducing. So we credit bank account with the 10,000. So you credit the bank account with the 10,000. Then you go to the comma account to debit it, to debit it with the 10,000. That's because you have received it. You debit it to 10,000. Then after that, we move on to the next one. We call about cash sales. Now, cash sales also is the way we treated the initial one that I'm saying that cash sales under the uh, sales accounts or sorry, under the cash accounts for the account for us, they're going to be on the debit side because you know, it's an, that is an inflow of cash. That is an inflow of cash. Then you now move on to the other one, which is the sales account. Now, the sales account is being credited. The sales accounts are credited at 4,700. They are credited. Then we move on to the next one. We'll talk about the uh, paid cash into bank. Now, paid cash into bank, it means that the cash that you have on you is getting to a large amount that you expect to have based on your control. So you need to take them to bank. You need to pay them to bank. So paid cash into bank, that's 800. So now who is giving? Cash is the one giving. So you what? You credit cash account. And who is receiving? Bank is one receiving. So you debit account 
su kolon ka ju as me amazing su kolon ka ju su kolon when the cash a bank a be paid on me that it means that the uh, the bank would be the one to to warehouse that has carried in well, what we have purchased from the mass number one and we need to open cash we have is an expense that is reducing and cash account is an example of assets so you credit cash account with two hundred with two hundred I see you can carry the accounts. Will there be such with two? That is that it was made in. That is giving out the money that the debit side will be on the purchase account. The debit side, can you see? that is that. So we move on to 1300. So good on credit, on credit. Now, once you have then definitely your trade pay receive go directly to say that. Call it under says journal. Under says journal. Okay, so you are purchasing a new bicycle. Now that bicycle is classified as well. It's classified as an asset, so it means it's increasing. You debit the bicycle account. Then the other one is the what is the, the payment method. We did we use check and check our direct relation to. So we credit back with how much? We did 4,000 there. So we credit back with 4,000 there. So we have the bank here. We have the bank here. We have that bank. So 4,000 there. Then after that, also we have, so we need to move on to the bicycle. We have the bicycle to get to be what? To be 4,000 as where? Bicycle to be 4,000 there as where? Then after that, we need, we'll, we'll move on. So the last one, which is pay the rent on premises by check. So they make payment of rent by check. So it means that rent is one receiving. Rent and card is an expense account. So you debit rent account. Then which is paying by what? By check. So you credit your check, your cash, your, sorry, your bank account. You credit your bank account. So you look at your bank account. Oh, credit it with what? We are crediting it with two, five. 
25. So you rent account will be the one to receive it. So once it's receiving, you debit it. So can you see that we debit it with two five? We debit it to two five. Now that now, now that we have done the posting, we are that as the last item that we treated here. That was the last item. The next thing for us is now to transfer our uh, our our balance from our journal to the account. So we need to transfer the balance from our journal to the account. So we now look at our journal. How many journal do we have? We have two journal apart from the initial general journal that we prepared. So we have purchase day book. Now this purchase day book only have one single figure there, which is 17,500. Now this 17,500 will be posted to the purchase account. A project of company and, and the name will be attached to it, which is sundry. Sundry means it means that what this money is still owing, but we are here to pay for it. That's sundry. It shows the liability element in it. So we have that. That's how you have it derived at this 17,500. 17, now the other one that we have. The other one that we have is the uh, sales account. Now, under the sales account, we add the old, sorry, under the sales uh, journal. Under the sales journal, we have two, two together to give us 2,150. Now, that's 2,150 will be fine. Remember, the sales journal that we are talking about does not involve what, double entry movement. They will only have to store the information pending it to be transferred to the ledger. So they are not involved in the rule of double column. As a double, double uh, yeah, double principle. So they are not in the rule of a double principle. So we have that addition of year give us 2150. I didn't see 2150. So we have it there. After that, we cannot go ahead and close our we can go ahead and close our ledger. So we can go ahead and close our ledger. So we have this. Yeah, what is this? If this on capital now, we are on capital, capital account. Now, on the capital account, we are on the credit side. Please, everything I've painted is what I've explained. Okay, everything I've painted is what I've explained, just so that you're able to follow up what and what we have not explained and what and what we have not done. Now, if you look at this now on the credit side, on the which is on the right hand side, we have that some thousand, that three thousand now on the painted there. It means that is the what we have entered. Then, at the end of the month, we need to close up that account. So we, on the on the debit side, you now have balance carried down. Now this this the debit side is zero before. It now be is zero minus thirty thousand nine hundred. That will give us thirty thousand nine hundred. So for us to get the balance, the balance is always the difference between the left and the right, and the difference is be the one to put under the column that is shortage of it, that is short of it. So that's uh, that's how we arrive at thirty nine thousand. I think that's nine hundred at this point. I think that's nine hundred at this point. Then you do the rest also. We have the come uh, come account. We have it on the purchase account. We have the bank account. So we have ten thousand here. We have seventeen thousand five hundred on that carry down the amount that we are still owing. Come account. So, and after that, we move on to the cash account. Now, cash account is straightforward because you are involved. Oh, excuse me. So, we have cash account. So, how do we close up cash account? We add up the uh, the debit side together. We add up the credit side together. They will now minus it, the one that gives us the highest, highest. Also, all the difference on the other side. So if you do your currency, now which account is in such such uh, shortage? Because what you're trying to do, you are going to try to balance the two accounts. So if my left hand side is in shortage compared to my right hand side, then I can now go ahead and say, okay, that's short of is the balancing of figure and which is going to have the closing balance for the month or for the period in view. It will be the closing balance for the period in view. That that's how we arrive as this. Then after that, or another thing that we okay, shop fittings, we also do the same thing. We have it here. Can you see? Down, 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 down to the last ledger, the last ledger. Then the question is, they ask us also to prepare trial balance. They also ask us to, to prepare trial balance. So what do you understand by trial balance? Trial balance is actually being told about as the act statement. That shows the that attests the accuracy of the ledger 
balance of the ledger balance. That is what that we call try balance. So try balance is a statement that tests the accuracy of the ledger balances. To make sure that we have computed the appropriate thing and to make sure that our report is free, free from all errors. Okay, number two, three column. The first one is the uh, description. The second one is the or uh, the second one is for the debit side. The third one is credit size. Can you see it yet? That is our try balance as the 31st August 2014. As the 31st August 2014. So uh, that is the format. Now, how do you arrive at this? It means that if you know the element, if you know the element of financial statement, you'll be able to prepare this. Uh, so uh, element of financial statement and the rules and the double entry rules that governs those elements. You'll be able to know who, where to post them. For example, any asset, asset always have a debit balance. So you find asset on the debit side, their liability and equity are always on the other, on the credit side. The same also goes to the income and expenditure. Income is always on the credit side, while expenditure is on, on the debit side, on the debit side. So it helps a lot to be able to differentiate between the two together so that we can move, so, that we, so it's very, very good so that we can move fast, so that we can move fast. So on that note, we now start moving, going back to our ledger. So we go back to our ledger one after the other. Okay, so okay what is the what we have on our ledger? We have capital account. So capital account, can you see BD? Now at this moment, we are using BD. We are using the, the closing balance is what we are going to pick. The closing balance is what we are going to pick as a that. So capital account is an equity account. And it's, you can, if you check the answer, it will give the same thing. So capital account can be found under the credit side for travel balance that we have that. The cash also, cash account is an asset account. So it will be found under the debit column. Cash account will be found under the debit column. Now remember, I say it's not the balance of BD of that previous year that you're going to put there. What I'm going to put there is the balance carry down amount for the year or for the month. The balance carry down amount for the year or for the month will be the one that will take over. Okay, that will be the one that will balance it up. So we have cash account. So what is the cash account? We have a cash account here. So we have balance it. We have to uh, cash account. Okay, where do we have the balance rather? Right? So that we have the balance. If you look at the balance here, can you see the balance carry down is 8,160. But it's going to be on the debit side on the balance. On the and as a cash account is an asset account. A cash account is an asset account. Then after that, we have account. A common account is actually so the balance is seven thousand five hundred. Will be the what, opening balance for this sign seven thousand five hundred. That would be recognized on the balance on the credit side on the credit side. On the credit sources of your this I I can eat okay. Then we have two fitting, uh shop fittings account. So we make payment to bank. Then the flow is uh sorry with two thousand four hundred. Then the balance carry down account. The gov or under the going to come under the in our ledger that we put it into the into the that purchase account. Now purchase account that will be twenty two thousand one for income account. An income account always have a credit entry, a credit entry. So on the on the uh, on the trial balance, your sales and account will be on the credit side. Then we have customer which which is talk about the trade receivables. Trade receivables are found under the current asset. Then you can go ahead. And put it under the what under the uh, debit column. Debit 
pull up of your tri balance. Carried in what is an expense. Expense of debit entry. Expense of debit entry. Kenneth, uh, Kenneth account is receivables account. So it's half debit entry as well. Bicycle account is an asset account. So then we also have what we call what? We also have the, uh, we also have bicycle under the, we have bicycle under the, to be the on the uh, the uh not the element number one at the same time into the uh the harder to the trial balance so we have that okay so that is that about that so the next one we want to look at is because of our first time as we first spent so let's look at the question four uh Discount, we have the cash and we have the bank. So that the two that the two things are. So let me I'll give it time. So read through the question so that I can easily solve the most as shown and shown the relevant discount account and they will appear in the general. We have to work on this. So if you want to work, on, we have two types of discount. We have the trade discount and we have the cash discount. That is the two types of discount we have. Now, this trade discount is a discount in which you use to encourage bulk. Is the discount given for bulk purchase. That's trade discount. Now, trade discount does not involve double entry principle. It does not involve the double entry principle. It is used to reduce the cost of the uh the cost of item purchase is used to reduce the payment are made. But the other one discount that we have is what we call discount. Now cash discount are given to encourage or ensure prompt payment, prompt payment of cash. Now okay fine if you pay within the social time percent of the money you hold that uh, only couldn't good pay part of it so we now have two type of cash discount we have allowed and discount receive these are the two these are the two uh to this cash discount that we have now this can allow is a discount that a company give its customer to take advantage for a good discount or that a rebate that the company are giving a comp a, another that the company are giving another party to enjoy their service or to pay back their month on at a reduced price, at a reduced price. So that's what we call what? That is what we call the discount allowed. Now, discount is, is, is with the preparer or the financial statement, enjoy the discount. So probably when you purchase with a vendor, if a vendor is telling you that we will pay within the two two weeks, 
they are going to enjoy 30% of this count. That, that that will call this a lot. You are and you enjoy the discount for now. After that being said, now let's look at the next one. The next one I want to look at now is to explain. So we want to try to look at the October 24. October 24. Please just give me a few minutes. I'll be back. You just give me a few minutes. I need to, I want to attend something. So welcome back. Welcome back to class. So now, so we have, so let's just try to prepare that. So if you look at the three column cash book, if you look at the three column back cash book, this is the format that we have there. Can you see the format? We have the dates, we have that date, we have the particular, we have the portfolio, we have the discounts allowed, we have the cash, we have the bank. Now this is one side. The from this to bank on this table, or this one on the table, they are what? They are one. Can you see this one is what? Is this is the debit side. The debit side. Then the other side is the reputation on the other side as well. And this is the credit side. It means whenever there is an outflow, it will come to where? To the credit side, credit column, your credit card side here. And whenever there is inflow, it will come on the what? On the debit side. So if once, if you know how to prepare three column cash book, it's very easy for you to prepare two column cash book. Two column cash book. So now let's look at the, let's look at questions. You are required. You are required. Enter of the transaction, and you are required. Enter of the transaction in the book in the cash book, and show the relevant transfer of the discount amount into their respective account in the ledger. Distinguish between the trade discount and cash discount, and dis describe briefly the account treatment for each of them. Why do you? What do you understand by contra entry? Explain briefly. Okay, so these are the requirements for us to know. So the first one is that you should enter the transaction into the cash book and show the relevant transfer of the discount amount into their respective uh, account in ledger. Okay, so now if that's the case, so let's just look one. So the question now, question now, October 4, 2024. Sorry, October 2014. Now, October 2014 says that uh, balance brought forward. So we have the balance brought forward, which means the opening balance for October. We have it to be cash in hand 780, cash at bank 12,560. 12,560. So that is what we have here. Okay, so now after the so we now okay, we want to now go to our cash book. And we have a cash book and we call the transaction there. So we go to our cash book and we call the transaction there. So now let's show down. Let's look at our cash book. So we have some 780 and the other one. Okay, so we have our balance. Can you see we have our balance October 1st? We have our balance brought down. It will be 780 and 12,560. So the cash is under the cash column. Why the bank is under the bank column? The cash is under the bank or the cash column. Why the bank is under the was under the bank column. Then after that, we move on to the next one. Saying that the following persons pay their account by check. In each case, deducting five percent are sent between five five percent cash discount. Account Musa eight hundred, Kame eight hundred, and Kaka is two hundred. Jibu is one thousand two hundred. Now the following persons pay their account by check. In each case, deducting. Five percent now. If they pay by check, it means that it's going to be in bank. It's going to affect bank column. Now, once they paid, it means it's coming in into the account. They make payment to their check, and we are the one receiving it. We are receiving it. Now, what are we receiving? If you look at it, then we just have show you one or two. Then we we'll move on. If you look at this now, they are expected to take advantage of five percent discount cash. So they took advantage of the five percent cash. Discount so that and I said that cash discount is responsible, is what is part of double entry principle, and it is used to encourage prompt payment between the clients to encourage prompt payment between the clients. So we have the five percent. So we have another one that we have is let's say okay, let's talk about Musa. Musa is 800 Nera, 800 Nera times five percent, five percent that will give us 40. It means that the cash discount 
The discount that the person will enjoy is 40 Naira discount, and the person is going to make payment of 760. The person is going to make payment of 760. Now, the question is, where we, is it the on discount allow or discount received? The definition is on discount received. So, your on discount allow is on discount allow. Is on discount allow. That's 40. And discount allow is fine on the debit column of your three column cash book. The, so we have it here. So we have it. Can you see? Musa, the uh, discount allowed is 40 naira, while the bank is 700. 700. So the same thing also applies to the, this, the, this one also. This one, that's, this is given to us as 600. Now, 5% of 600 will give us 30. So 30 there is the, or is the, the 30 there is the discount allowed. So we move on to Kaka. Kaka is being paid 200. 5% of 200 will give us 10. It will give us 10. Then after that, we have Jibrain, or oh, that will give us oh, 2,000. They will put an asset of it for 2,000. But it's giving us 5% this 5 discount. And it has been said that it's going to be allowable. So 5% 5 of 5% 5 of two, uh, 1,200 is 60. 5% of 1,200 is 60. So that's why we have a 60 here and we have the bank here. Now, if you look at this, what we have under this bank, you notice that that is the amount that the actual amount that I eat up our for this bank. It means the actual amount is what is being posted in the uh, other bank. Then the other one is 60. So now let's look on to the next one. Now this next one say paid rent in in cash. So they pay rent in cash of 120. So what when they pay rent, what happens to your resources? Your resources decreases. So we have rent. So we have rent to be what? Start that another one. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Is giving. That's why we are crediting that aspect now. Another one that we have is the Okay, so now let's go on. So let's go on with the that. So next one we have is uh, October 4. October 4, we have paid, we have paid our uh, Timosa his account of six something by check, no discount being deducted. So we are paying what we paid uh, Musa. So paid Musa is account of 670 by check, no discount being deducted. Another one that we have on October 5 is cash sales paid directly into the bank. Now this amount is what is And we debit our bank. We debit our bank. So we have, even though it's cash sales, but the money was paid into the bank. So we debit our bank to be 750. We debit our bank to be 750. So another one that we have here is what we call the, uh, okay, October 6. October 3 say that pay the following amount by check. In each case, it's deducting 5% cash discount. So I can't, so we paid it now. Can you see this is the amount that we paid out now to them? So if you look at the account here, now Nazri is 200, right? Okay, now let's does we have it here. So now this is the amount that we are expected to pay is 200. The amount that we are expected to pay is 200. But we enjoy a cash discount of 5%. So 200 times 5% discount will give us 10. It means that that 10 is the discount received. Can you see? Discount received. We are expected to receive 200. But we are paying 190. We 
also also is the same thing as well. We expect to pay six hundred naira, but we pay five seventy because we taxi naira. Also, the same thing goes for the world. The salary as well. If you are expected to enjoy a total sum of three five, a total sum of three five. But now you are one enjoy. You are enjoying. Uh, you are you are actually you are expected to pay a pay on uh, three thousand four fifty. Three thousand sorry three thousand. 3420. Then as a also is the same thing. We expect to pay 800 is actually paid 760. So the amount that we actually paid is one that is our bank 760. But this can be received is deducted from the um, total amount that is paid. Can you see that? So that's why we say this can is your card, this can are giving to encourage want payment to encourage the want payment they are take out of the cash for personal use and if that is the case Debit your cash before is we are expecting him to pay us 890, but he pay us 850. So the amount that we are going to receive is going to be 850 because that's the amount is actually sent to us, and that is fine on the debit side. Because whenever asset uh, cash increases, you put it on the debit side. So we have the K Frankie, we have it the formation to be here. I with me, we have the formation to be here, 850. Then we move on to the next one that we have. The next one says that. Okay, we have the next one here. The next one says that cash withdraw from the bank 1,000 for business use. No, cash withdraw from the bank 1,000 for business use. Now, this is what we call contract entry. This is what we call contract entry because contract entry are single transaction that is, appears both on the credit side and the debit side of the same ledger. So whenever a single transaction occurs both on the debit side and on the credit side of the same ledger is being regarded to as is being regarded to as uh is being regarded to as uh contra entry. So now cash withdrawal from from the bank. Bank is giving now bank is giving us cash for what purpose for bank we use. So the bank will be affected, the cash will be affected. But because we are putting it on the same account, two of them will work. Two of them we are fed this three colon cash book that we are that we are preparing. So cash withdraw from the bank, 1,000 naira. So who is giving? Bank is giving. So we are going to credit bank account. So we are going to come out here and put under the bank column, credit it for what purpose? For cash. Can you see? If you look at the bank now, from bank down to here, we have the 1,000. You took it out backward. You have to do the cash. Then if you look at the other side as well, if you look at the other side, you are going to see the same transaction on the other side. But this time around, cash is one receiving. Is receiving from bank, so we have it here. That is what we call. So the CS star for what? Contra entry, contra entry, contra entry. Okay. The next one that we have says salary paid in cash. So whenever you pay salary in cash, it means that your cash have reduced. So you have to credit your cash, uh, your cash account. So you have to credit your cash. You have to reduce the amount in there. So we have. If you look at this solution we have here, we have salary. The purpose salary because the second leg you go into salary account so we have that it's on it because it's cash it was cash was paid that's why we're having under the cash column the next one we have is the following persons pay their accounts by check the following persons pay their accounts by check in each case deducting a five percent cash discount so now this time around the following person pay their account by check in each case deducting a five percent that so now this time my people, we are expecting 1,400 for Miriam. We are expecting 1,400 for Miriam. So Miriam actually did not pay one, sorry. We are expecting, what are we expecting? We are expecting 1,400. The following person 
16 pay the amount by check in each case deducting the part okay cash the account okay 1400 we have 1000 okay so that so that's the amount that we have paid us they paid us the total amount i have to regards to the one four so wait sorry is it one four that we're expecting for miriam yes miriam is one four now if miriam is one four this now this miriam here is expected to give us if we calculate five percent of one four we give us what one percent of one four so it's 0 0.5 0.05 times 14. That'll give us 70. So the cash allow the cash discount allow is 70. 70 minus 14 will give us 1033. 1330. So please, this one for this one for year to be replaced by three or uh, it can be replaced by 1330. 1330 is because the actual money paid by Miriam is 114. The money paid by Emilia is 1330 because the Emilia enjoy discount a lot of 70. Now, if the next one that we have is that they pay 1000. Can you see 1000 is both pay 1000, but the amount that actually eat our bank is 950. Why the other 50 is what is the discount allowed? And we check bio as well. The same also applies to bio. Bio is expected to pay us 37, but it will only pay us 3600. Now, the difference there is the discount allowed that buyers enjoy. A discount allowed that buyers enjoy. So we have by that. Then we now have internet browsing, uh, browsing in cash. Now, internet, uh, internet browsing in cash, it means that cash is one giving ammo is 300. Now, you reduce cash with browsing. The purpose is for browsing. So we reduce cash account by posting it on the credit side. By question on the credit side. The next one that we have is the perpetual pays a further 10,000 naira cash capital into the bank from its private money. Now, the perpetual pays a further 10,000 capital into the bank. Now, once your bank re re receives it, your bank increases. So you debit your bank. And the purpose why we are debiting is in introduction of new capital. So we have to put capital here. Capital here, then you could debit it with 10,000 naira, with 10,000 naira. Then another one that we have here, another one that we have here is talks about the uh, Balaraba pay 760 in cash. So it pays 760 in cash. So cash is receiving it. What you just need to do is debit your cash account with 760 because the amount is actually being paid into cash. So we debit it. Can you see that? We debit it with 760. I will debit it with some system. The other one that we have over here, I think is the last, is the proprietor bank all the money in the office except 150. Now it's thinking about, oh, at the end of the day, the proprietor bank all the money that the balance that we have there is 150. Two thousand thousand five forty. Now, if I see it, one that I've painted on the cash together is the one twenty plus four hundred plus eight hundred plus three hundred. That will give us one thousand six twenty. That will give us one thousand six twenty. So one thousand six twenty minus two thousand five forty. One thousand twenty minus two thousand five forty. That will give us eight ninety. It means that the balancing figure that has the cash that you have at hand. At the end of the year is what is going to be one nine eight ninety. But that last part says that every other amount we are what we are banked. That last part said that every other amount apart from one fifty, every other cash apart from one fifty, we are banked. So if we expect to have the total cash of eight ninety, you now say eight ninety minus one fifty. That will give us seven forty. 
it means that is that some forty that will not serve as what as the total money that is being paid into the account. Let's add every up together. Let's add it up together again. It should give us the same thing. So one one twenty plus four hundred plus eight hundred plus three hundred plus so so. Okay, that's that's all. Plus three hundred. That was one thousand three fifty. 1350 so let's add for the cash the debit side now for the debit side let us add the cash column together so we have let me write this one down so on the on the other side we have some 80 okay we have some 80 we have 1000 we have 1000 after 1000 what do we have we have that 1000 we have we have 760. That gives us 2,540. Yes, 2,540. Now 2,540 minus 1,350. That gives us 1,190. 1, so I've subtracted the total amount I derived from my credit side, from my what, from my debit side. That will give us 1,190. Now 1,190 minus 150. That will give us. Okay, 120 plus 400 plus 800 plus 300, 1,620. See, 1,000 minus 2,540. Nine twenty minus 150, that gives us something. Hey, that sounds something. So if we want to look at the last, last part together so we understand it. Now, if you look at this, they say the Upacho banked all the money, it banked all the money in the office except 150 Naira. So it means that our balance carried down will be 150. Now, after we have stopped at this point, if we add everything together here from this cash, if we add them together, the other I can't select it. If we had 120, 400, 800, 300 together, it will give you 1,620. So that 1,620, you now go to the other side, the debit side. So we have under the same cash column on the debit side this time around. We have cash here. We now have 700. We have the 1,000. After the 1,000, we now add also the one, one with it. That's 760. If we add this together, it will give you what? It will give you five two thousand five forty. Now this two thousand five forty minus the amount that you have gotten on the credit side, which is one thousand six twenty, will give us a total of nine twenty nine twenty. So it means that before it debanks any money, the total cash within was what was nine twenty. Now that you have bank money, the one that the total cash that left is one fifty. But it means that one nine twenty minus one will give us seven seventy. And that 770 is the amount that was bank, the amount of cash that was bank. Now, because it involved cash and bank, that is what we call contra entry. Because it involved both cash and bank, we call it contra entry. So who is receiving it? Bank is one receiving it. So on the credit and when it's increasing, you debit such account. So that's why we have it. Cash we have under the bank column. We have under the bank column to be what to be debited. Then the other second leg we now go. Other second leg we now go to the bank, which is credit. We have because bank is the giver, a cash is the giver, rather. So cash is the giver. So you are going to credit cash, then debit bank. Then they now have discount allow. How do you do discount allow? Every amount uh, under the discount allow in three color cash book will be transferred to the discount allow account. It will transfer to discount allow, then hide balance carry down. Balance carry down. But it is a profit or loss account. For the discount receive, discount receive is regarded as other income. So it will be put under the credit side. It will be really under the credit side. They will not have the balance carried down on the other side. 
on the other side. So that is that about the so please is there any question? Any question about what you have done so far? If you have question, please you can make use of the chat box. Any question? So I'll give you like I'll give like two minutes to ask question. If there's no question, we move on. I'll give like two minutes. What was it? I said I don't have a question. It's well understood. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now, so not lovely. So we move on. Because of our time. So now let's move on to the next one. The next one we want to hear under material for that. So now that what are, before we prepare our there are other adjustments that we need to know before we can go ahead and prepare our financial statement, before we now prepare our financial statement. So what are the other adjustments to know? So I'm going to share the material with you. on this one i'm coming just trying to check that okay so this one we're going to talk about now is the adjustment on the uh, on the tribunals now we have talked about journal we have talked about ledger. We have talked about trial balance. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the adjustment on trial balance because is after you have tested your knowledge about double entry, you will also test your knowledge about the what about the adjustments on journal. So at this level, you have your you have three major adjustments that you need to know. Three major adjustments that you need to know. Number one, you need to know the adjustment which is bad debt adjustment. Number two, you need to know adjustment which is called the uh the depreciation you have to know depreciation as well there also you have to know the um under one accrued and prepayment accrued prepayment or also we call n and or n so we have you have to know that as well we have to know how we account for it how does these things affect our financial statement because the truth is before you go ahead and prepare a financial statement there is some adjustment that we will carry that at the end of the month or at the end of the year we call them month or year adjustment because they are not part of your day-to-day -day activities. They are done at the end of a particular point in time, at a particular point in time. So now we are going to start with bad debts. We are going to start with bad debts. From bad debt, we now move on, on to other areas. So what do you understand by debts? Debts are actually talking about the, debts are actually talking about the money you hold another party. Debt is the total money that is owned by another party. Either you own or they own you. That, those are debts, okay? Three types of debt. We have three types of debt. We have good debtors. So we have three types of debtors. That's three types of debtors. We have number one, we have the good doctors. Number two, we have the uh, doubtful debtors. Number three, we have the bad debtors. These are the three types of debtors that we have. Now, looking at good debtors, what are good debtors? Good debtors are those that are willing and able to pay at the, at the particular point in time. They, are, they have the money and they are willing, they are ready to pay the money that the, the money based on the service they have enjoyed. So it means that that's not a good debtor. It means that we can go ahead and take do business with them since they will surely pay us our money. Because they will also surely pay us our money. The other one that we have is the doubtful debtors. The doubtful debtors are the one that uh, they are willing, but they are not able to pay. They are willing. So they are actually what well, these are the ones that are willing, but not able to pay. They actually want to pay, but there's no fund. There's no resources to what uh, to pay for that. So these are these are the impacts, that are the effects of the 
is that the uh, DAFU debt, they are the DAFU debtors. The other one that we have is the bad debtors. The bad debtors are those that are not willing and those that are not ready to pay. They are not willing and they don't have the money to pay. So they are debt, even from the onset, before they obtain that, they are debt, they know that they won't pay back. So that they are bad debtors. They are the people that will normally pay agreements that what that should they not come to our business because they will not pay and the company will surely write it up as well as bad debt, as bad debt. So at the end of the year, or at the end of the year, normally at the, end, at the end of the year, they normally carry hard work for they make provision for you. What does that mean? Provision? provision is actually what is planning ahead against uh laws that will appear in the future, but is giving us sign now. That's provision. Provision is that oh, the way I'm seeing looking at this, this uh, customer A will not pay us our money. So let me raise provision for it. If the provision might be I should remove the total amount of money that is owing me. I should remove it. I'll, 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 I'll just partially remove it. Or I reduce it by let's say 50%. That is provision so that I will not overestimate my profit. So that I will not, I will not record sales. I will not record loss as sales. Because if the person did not pay back, that was a loss. So I will, not, I will try as much as possible to address that area on time as a professional accountant. So if that's the case, then it means that accountants general have a lot of things to do at the end of the year to make sure that those, the, the amount that is called trade receivables are the amount that is receivables. It's not the amount that is no longer receivables. You hear, you hear the word. The word is trade receivables. So if you have for someone, probably someone that is a bad debtor, you have been trading for for five years, a person has travel or relocate, then you know that possibility of you were collecting that money is actually very, very, very low. Because look, relocation will prove difficult. We might, we might actually find it difficult from tracing the person or from keeping, keeping contact with the person. So if that is the case, then the, the accountant can go ahead and say, okay, let me make provision for this loss. That eventually this woman can go now or the man or the buyer now actually come out and say that, ah, he does not have the money. Then he knows that he has made provision in the, in the past. Then it's good to go. Those are provisions. So now the question now is how do we treat bad debt? How do we treat bad debt? So bad debt are actually written off. The way we normally treat bad debt is that bad debt are written off to the uh, profit or loss account. So bad debt are written off and relevant de uh, debtors account by, so they are written off by number one. They are written off on the client account. They are written off on the profit or loss account. So the way they write it off on the asset account, or let's say trade receivable account, is crediting it. Whenever, no, trade receivable is an asset account. An asset account have debit entry. So now that we want to reduce it, what do we do? You credit it. So bad debt is always credited to trade receivables. And the other leg goes to profit or loss account. Profit or loss account. That is the way we treat bad debt. That is the way we treat bad debt. So bad debt is actually what? By crediting a trade receivable account, and debiting bad debt account. The bad debt account is to be close to profit or loss account of a business enterprise. So we have a account a ledger on its own. Bank account um, bad debt have a ledger on its own. So, but it's really the large ledger is an express account. So it's found under the profit or loss account, profit or loss account. Now, now if there's not a case that we have written off, the bad, the bad debt, the amount, bad debts to the uh, profit or loss account, and you now recover the account. What you do is that uh, uh, bad debt recover, when you recover, is to be treated as business gain. So you treat it as business gain by debiting the cash book. So you debit the cash books because the money are flowing. The money that you thought that it, it won't come in again, that that little what came in. So you debit the cash book and you, and, and what? and a bad debt recovery account. Then you credit a bad debt recovery account. That a bad debt recovery account is other income. It's an example of other under income account because you are going to credit it. You are going to credit that account. You are going to credit that account. So another one also that we need to look at is the provision for bad debt. Provision for bad and doubtful debt. What is provision for bad and doubtful debt? There are amounts set out. So provision is like provision is the amount set out of profit to provide for bad and doubtful debt as as 
so as not extra extra so that's not what increase so that's not to increase the value of the asset so i'm not going to increase over increase the value of the asset that's what we are talking about provision for bad debt is actually and that food debt is charged against profit they are charged against the profit as it is almost certain it's almost certain that the person will that the person will not pay back and the other part the other position will be used to reduce the trade receivables to reduce the trade receivables so that's the way we treat the provision for bad debt and also another thing you need to know that whenever we just if there's no provision for bad debt before if there's no provision or allowance and that name for this is allowance if there's no provision or allowance for bad and doubtful debt before then the total difference or what the, the, the new provision will be charged to profit or loss accounts the new provision will be charged to profit or loss account but if provision for account exists if provision for loss account exists then definitely what you that what you, you will charge what you will charge to your profit or loss account is either the increase in the provision of account in the provision of bad debt or decrease of provision for bad debt when talking about increase of provision of bad debt we are talking about when you compare the opening balance to the closing balance and it's different if it's higher then the difference there will be taken to profit or loss account as increase in the provision of bad debt then if it's actually decreasing if it's decreasing that is the gain to the organization so we raise it also and put it on the other gain and say okay fine the reduction of reduction of bad debt provision for bad debt so we put it there so those are the two ways we are three ways in which we record it the initial amount is being right to debited to what profit or loss account and credited to uh to the provision of account but later figure subsequent year if there's a figure that is existing the difference is what we were going to paste into the financial statement for the profit or loss account the difference there that we're going to place there is an increase so we are going to debit the or debit the profit or loss account but if it's a decrease you are going to serve it that serve as a gain you are going to what credit the profit or loss account credit the profit or loss account so under one, okay, these are the things that two things that you need to know. So we have talked about theory. Can you see that in the first year of rising the provision account, that is the first year of rising it, what do you do? You debit profit or loss account and credit provision account with the amount of the provision. That is the first year with the amount of the provision. Then the other one is in subsequent year, the entry will depend on whether the provision is being increased or not. Now, if the provision increase, you debit profit or loss and you credit provision account. But with the case is that it decreases, that means that what you debit profit or provision account and credit profit or loss account because it's regarded as other gain. It means that we have over you have over uh estimated the uh the outcome in some things. So that so I mean that in, in previous year, it means that we have overestimated the provision in the previous year. So for the current year now, we have reviewed, and based on our review, we now notice that it has what it has decreased. So instead of fifteen thousand, we are charging you five thousand. That difference of ten error goes to uh goes to the profit or loss account as gain, as gain, as gain. So under one, okay. So we have under one also that we have is provision for discount allowable. Provision for discount allowable. What is provision for discount allowable? It means that the provision that for discount allowable is charged against profit. It's also charged against profit. The discount allowable adapters are reconciled. Well, sorry, this discount allowable to debtors are considered as, as expense to the business, and all accounting entry regarding the provision for bad debt are applied. So every uh, rules of the bad debt applies to this one as well. If it's the first year, we recognize it in full. The second year, you what you carry it over. Now, however, however, how do we calculate the discount allowable? However, in order to calculate this precious uh, provision for discount allowable, it is necessary for us to deduct the provision. We are going to look look at it, your trade receivables, and we are going to remove your 
discount uh, your, your provision for a liable. They want to remove it before you can get to discount. Why? Trade is available is telling you this is the amount that you can go equal, you can receive, right? They now multiply it by provision. Okay, give and take out of 150 that I can receive 20,000 error reward. It might be bad debt for me. So I've written out to what to be 10,000 error bad debt. Now I will ask, okay, the 150 minus 10,000 will give me the net what the net trade receivables. From there, I will now move forward. What are the provisions? Out of this 150 that I want to collect, it's possible that they will what some people will not pay me on time this year, they will pay me next year. So in order for me to be on the silver side, let me use proportion. They cannot go ahead proportion. That's okay. Let's all use 0.5 percent to average what we bought to average it if we will pay it or not. So looking at that, okay, what the trade receivables minus discount allow. So the trade receivables minus provision. Provision for that would debt, close bracket times your discount allow percentage. That will not give you the what? The provision for discount allow. It will give you the provision for discount allow. So let's look at question one. Let's look at question one. Let's solve some question one. Question one saying the following information have been extracted from the books of Adams Limited on 1st April 2018. The following so information has been extracted from the books of Adams Limited on 1st April 2018. The provision for discount allowed was, what is the provision for discount allowed? Was 5,830. And the provision for bad debt was 2,234. Discount allowed during the year or the, during the year to 31st uh, March 2019 was 18,824. And bad debt rating of was 4,832. 4, 4, On 31st March 2019, debtors amounted to 425,052. And the provision for bad debt is to be based upon a specific provision of 5,052 and general provision on the remainder at first at 1%. The provision for discount allowed is to be 2%. Now we are asked to work to compute the bad to prepare bad debt account. We are prepared to prepare provision for bad debt account. We are to prepare discount allowed account, provision for discount allowed account, statement of financial position extract. And if I want to do that, I, will force, I, will, I need to understand the question in full so that I can know the opening balance. I'll post my opening balance first before I now post for the year. <clears throat> so excuse me, let me take water. Okay, sorry about that. Okay.
So let's continue. Let's continue. Let me try. Tell me, I'm just trying to share my screen. Okay, so we are back now. So let's continue. So we have bad debt. So we have the other one that we have there is the, uh, we stopped at the discount allowed during the year 24th, March 2019 was 18,824. So that is that is the discount for the year, 18,200. So that's discount allowable, okay? 18,824. So what we do there is that, Look at the discount allow account. You put it there. Your second leg goes to the trade receivables. You have that figure here, eighteen thousand eight hundred and twenty-five. Then after that, I think there's, I think they will open. Yes. Okay. So we have. Can you see here? We have discount allow for the year, eight thousand. That is the second leg. So we have done the second leg. So we move on to the next one. The next one says that um bad debt was bad debt rating of was. Getting off, it means that your bad debt account will be what will be debited while your trade receivable will be credited to reduce the impact of that amount on it. So we come here and put okay, bad debt. So we have trade receivables that's one that was written off, written off. So we have under the trade receivables, we have oh god, we have that to be four thousand. That's the first one. Uh, let's move on. So we in this one that we have there is saying that on 31st March 2019, debtors amounts to 31st March debtors amount to 425,052. So the total credit sales for that at, at that moment is what 412. So, so we have it here. So sales, the second day we go to sales. So anything for that we go to sales. So we are not we are not required to prepare sales account. So we are going to we are not going to open sales account. So you debit uh, trade receivables account and credit sales account for that uh, sales on credit, okay? So the next one that we're going to do, next, so can you say we are picking them, we are picking them one after the other and posting, and posting them appropriately. The next one is that the provision for bad debt is to be based upon a specific provision of 5,052. So they give us a specific provision for provision for bad, bad debt and a general provision on the remainder at 1%. Now, the they give, they give us on the remainder. So before we can get the 1%, before we can apply that 1% to it, it means that we need to look at our trade receivables. What is the closing balance of our trade receivables? The closing balance of our trade receivables is 401,396. So you have that, you have that out. So we have 401,396. Times sorry minus what is the specific the specific uh provision given to us provision for bad debt minus what five zero five two that will give us three hundred and ninety six thousand three hundred and forty four that three hundred and ninety six thousand three hundred and forty four is the amount that one percent will be used natural to get our general provision remember it says that and a general provision on the remainder at one percent so the remainder after you have removed your specific uh provision from that uh trade receivables we give you the amount that you can charge your general provisions on and that will be times one percent one percent And that will give us 3,963.44. Now, if we add that amount, if we add that amount to this one, giving us specific 5052, 
If we add it to be one of the specific, it will give us 9,015. Now 9,015 is the closing figure for the provision for what? For that to debt. So we have the closing, can you see we have the closing balance? Closing balance to be 9,015. Based on our calculation now, that will give us 9,015, the closing balance. Now looking at it, our open balance is two, okay, are we, is that all? Okay, let's continue. So the provision for discount allow is to be 2%. Now, if you want to calculate the provision for discount allow, we need, we need to remove the, we need to remove, let me see, okay. We need to remove uh, provision for bad debt from the trade receivable. So what is the trade receivable there? It's 401396. That is trade receivable minus 9015. That will give us 392. So what is the percentage of the provision for discount allowable? So we go back there and put, okay, which one is discount allowable? That is 2%. So times 2%. That will give us 7,848. That amount given to all is the closing balance for provision. It means that at the end of the year, our provision for discount allow is that amount that we have got. So we come here and put closing balance. Oh, yeah, put closing balance. Then after we have done with this, the next one is not for us to now close our accounts. We close our account. So we now close our account. So how do we close our account? We have it one year. We have one year. We say, okay, bad debt accounts. So we have, we trade receivables for uh, this moment. And that way we can do it. We can transfer your provision for bad debt. The increase, the difference is you can try to fight under your bad debt account, or you can show it alone on your financial performance. You can decide to show it on your financial performance, or you can decide to post them under your bad debt. So now, if you have this, like, so with this on this question solution, it was posted under the bad debt. So we have the difference, the open difference between the opening balance and the closing balance. And that will give us a total sum of 6,781. That 6,781 was now written down to total. We, we could debit this amount with that amount. So we add addition of these two together, we will be, we will be the one that we're going to put under our profit or loss account. Then also we go back to also our discount allowed. Discount allowed as well, discount allowed. We're going to write off our differences of provision for discount allowed. So the discount allow account. So we have opening balance here for discount allow to be 5,830, and we have the closing balance. It means it has increased. It means it has increased. So what is the increase element there? The increase element there is 2,018. That is the increase element there. So that's 2,018 will be rated up to the discount allowed account to be 2,018. Then from there, the total will not be written off to profit or loss account. The reason why we may, may lot professional accept, uh, accept this is because it allows them, it allows them to, it allows them to, uh, to keep their financial statement neat. It allows them to keep their financial statement neat. Now, the last part of the question, we are required that we should show the extract, uh, that you do the extract or statement of financial position. Now, I want to do the extract or statement of financial position. I'm going to, first of all, state out my revenue my trade receivables, from there, I will less my provision for bad debt. From there, I will not less your provision for discount allowed. And once I do that, I will not get my total amount that I want, that I can now use under my current asset. It means that if I'm preparing my financial statement of financial position, all this provision will show. I'm not going to net it off. I'm not going to do offset in my workings. I have to show it on the boarding of my statement of financial position. Do you understand that? Okay, so it means that I'm not going to do oh work is one. Okay, trade receivable no. It have trade receivable four zero one three nine six minus nine thousand one five minus seven thousand eight four nine. No, you can't do that. You have to show them on your statement of financial position because they are part of your legal balances. They are part of your ledger balances. And ledger balances is being found under the trade uh, try, uh, try balance. Find on that try balance. So any question, I think this, I would like to call it
So then just if you have any questions so far, please, you can use the chat button, use the chat button to ask, ask your question. Why I wait for your question? Just have one minute to ask your question. Use the chat button to ask. Okay, I think no question. So, in the absence of any question, I would like to see our time and appreciate your 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 that for appreciate that you listening attentively, and I believe you have added one or two things to yourself. So, um, I would like to wish you a lovely evening, and we shall see in the next class. Okay, okay. So, bye for now. Till the next class.